Okay, so we're going to talk about two things. We're talking about the cell life, and then we're talking about mitosis. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus, okay? The cell life includes mitosis, but mitosis isn't all of the cell's life. So the first thing we want to do is we want to talk about the cell life. And as I told you before, some cells live for 120 days, like the red blood cells, and then they, they die. They break apart and die. Um, some cells, some white blood cells, they might live up to 20 years. And then there's some cells in your body that are there for life, right? So the, each cell has a different um, life. The only cells that are going to go through mitosis, they require two things. One, they have to have a nucleus, because that's what mitosis is. It's dividing the nucleus into two nuclei that are identical to the first nucleus, and they have to have centrioles. If they don't have those two things, they cannot divide, right? So we have to have those two things. So let's start out by looking at Let's start out by looking at the cell's life, right? And when the cell is just living its life and doing its normal thing, that is called interphase. Interphase is not a part of mitosis. Interphase is about three quarters of the cell's life. So mitosis is a quarter of it, and this interphase is three quarters of it. So the cell, most of the time, if a cell can divide, most of the time it's just going to be an interphase, doing its thing, right? So what is its thing? Well, one of the things, the main thing that that nucleus is going to do is it's going to produce proteins, produces proteins. Um, and we learned in class that the nucleus is the one that has the code to code for certain proteins, and then the proteins are actually produced when the messenger RNA binds to the ribosome, right? So we learned that in lecture. But this is the, this is the cell's main thing. It's supposed to, that's what its job is. It's going to produce some structural protein so it can repair itself, but it's also going to be producing some, if its job is to make antibodies, that's the protein it's going to make. If its job is to make certain enzymes, that's the protein the cell's going to make. If the cell's job is to make hormones, that's the protein that the cell's going to make, right? So its job, it has a job, and it's going to be doing this. It's going to be producing proteins, and that's what it does throughout the majority of its life is just to produce these proteins. But at a certain point, um, if it has a nucleus and centrioles, it's going to enter into mitosis, and so it has to prepare for mitosis. So that's the second thing that it will do in interphase. It'll prepare for mitosis. Right? And in mitosis, we, it starts out with one nucleus. And it will end up with two nuclei. Each of the two nuclei are identical to the first nucleus, right? So they, we end up with two nuclei identical to the first nucleus. Well, in order to do that, in order to um, end up with um, two nuclei, we're going to have to double up the chromosomes. So that's how it starts to prepare. So it um, doubles the DNA. Another name for doubling is called, you know, duplication. So the DNA get duplicated. And remember the DNA, so let's, let's talk for a minute about the DNA. So here you have your, your cell, and here is your nucleus in your cell, right? And inside the nucleus, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. In all of your cells in your body, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, except in your sex cells. And what does a pair mean? What do we mean by pair? Because 23 pairs means that there's actually 46 chromosomes in there. But we don't just say 46 chromosomes. We say 23 pair. 
That's because um, in those tightly coiled DNA, so when you look at your, your DNA and it's like this, right? There's two strands there, but I'm gonna show it as just a single strand um, be, to demonstrate, right? So when we look inside the nucleus, we have a pair. That means we have one chromosome that came from your dad, and we have another chromosome that came from your mom, right? That's a pair. The reason why they're a pair is that they both code for the same thing. So maybe they both code for your hair color. Let's say dad's hair color wins out because he has a dominant gene and mom has a recessive gene. So dad's hair color wins out, you have dad's hair color, right? Or eye color, or skin color, or you know, um, your, your uh, protection against diseases. There's, there's all sorts of things that these um, DNA um, code for, but they are found in these um, homologous chromosomes or similar chromosomes, if that makes sense, right? So I'm showing you just one pair, and that's what I'm going to do throughout this whole thing. I'm going to show you one pair. What happens to one pair of chromosomes in, this, in mitosis? But just imagine there's actually 23 pairs. All right, so the first thing that happens, we said, uh, or not the first thing, but towards the end of interphase, we said that the DNA doubles. So we end up getting a, um, another, whoop, we get another mom chromosome, and we get another dad chromosome, because they double up, right? We've doubled the number of chromosomes. And what they're going to do then is they're going to bind together like that. So the chromosome and their copies, they bind together. And when they do that, we now call that a chromatid. So each one of these things is a chromatid. And all of that happens in, um, that all happens in this interphase. Now the cell's ready to divide, right? The, the nucleus is ready to divide. So the same chromosomes combine, not one Yep, right. So the dad copy, it, it combines to the copy of the dads. The mom binds to the copy of the mom. Dad and dad, mom and mom. Yep, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing that's going to happen out here is that these organelles, there's a whole bunch of organelles, they're going to replicate too. Because if we're going to end up with two cells at the end, we better make more organelles to prepare. So the organelles replicate as well. Okay, now we're ready for mitosis. So mitosis has four different phases to it. So we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase or telophase. I always used to say telophase and then someone got me saying telophase, so I don't know. Tomato, tomato, right? In our lab models and also in these actual phases, prophase will have both an early and a late. And anaphase will have both an early and a late. So we have to be aware of that, right? So in our models, we're gonna see the early and late of those phases. So the first phase we wanna look at then is prophase. And you know, when, you, when you're memorizing things, just make up whatever silly thing you can do to memorize stuff, and then the, you know, go back and try to comprehend it. You have to memorize steps, you have to memorize um, lists. There's a whole bunch of things to memorize, right? Uh, but you also want to make sure you understand it. So to memorize this, you could say promat. So promat, to know the order of mitosis, pro, m, a, T, promat, you know, anything silly that you can think of to memorize it, right? All right, so let's talk about prophase. So in the early phase of prophase, bless you, there's our cell and there's our nucleus, okay? 
And inside the nucleus, we have dad's chromosomes and their copies, and we have mom's chromosomes and their copies, right? So that's what we have. And at the same time, what happens, so this is um, the beginning of, of prophase, this is early. What we see happening is those centrioles, those were one of the organelles that replicated. So now instead of having one pair of centrioles, we now have two pairs of centrioles, right? Two pairs of centrioles. And those centrioles help to, um, they start calling the microtubules to organize themselves into what we call the spindle apparatus. And it looks like a football-shaped net extending from one pair to the other pair of centrioles. So that is the spindle apparatus. All right, so it's just beginning to form. So when you're looking at early prophase, you're seeing a couple of things. You're seeing that the nuclear membrane is still intact. And you're seeing that the centrioles are starting to form that spindle apparatus. So that's, it's as simple as that. That's what I want you to memorize with that. Now in the next, um, in the, this is early, so if we look at late then, here's the cell. What we see in late is we see those uh, centrioles, and now they're on opposite ends of the cell. We see that the spindle apparatus is being fully formed, so it truly looks like this football net, right? Like it's in the shape of a football, but it's really like a net because it's going to catch the chromosomes. And then we see those chromosomes, and they're caught in the net. So there's dad's chromosome, and there's mom's chromosome, right? And they're just caught in the net. That's only, that's only um, one, you know, there's 23 others identical to, you know, there are 23 other chromosomes. Okay, so this is the late phase. They're just caught in the net. No nuclear membrane. And those, um, those chromatids are trapped in the net randomly. They're just randomly trapped. All right. Now we're going to look at metaphase. So in metaphase, that's our next one. Here's our cell. Here's our centrioles. Here's our spindle apparatus with the microtubules, right? Now what these microtubules do is they move things through the cell, right? Isn't that what we said? So they're basically, they pull on things. So what we see here is that we have dads and moms, chromatids, are getting pulled in both directions. Those microtubules are pulling them towards the centrioles. Pulling, pulling, pulling. They're not separated, but they're pulled so tight on both directions that they end up in the middle of the cell. So the spindle apparatus is made of microtubules? Yep. The spindle apparatus is made of microtubules. It's pulling on those chromatids. It's pulling so tight and equally on both sides that those chromatids get pulled to the middle of the cell. So in metaphase, chromatids meet in the middle. Meet in the middle, metaphase, right? That's what metaphase is. Right, now we're going to look at anaphase. So what happens in anaphase? Now we said that anaphase has an early and a late. So we'll look at early, and then we'll look at late. Okay, so in early, here's our cell. Right, and here we have the spindle apparatus. But the um, 
the, the chromatids get pulled apart. Because the spin, the the um, microtubules have pulled so hard that they've separated the chromosomes. So during anaphase, the chromatids separate. That's what happens in anaphase. They separate. There's no longer a bond between dad's chromosome and the copy or the mom's chromosome and the copy. They get pulled apart. The chromosomes get pulled apart. The chromatids get pulled apart. Now these are called daughter chromosomes. Okay, so we've got daughter chromosomes pulled apart. Now we know it's early because they're still fairly close to the middle. That's one huge clue that it's early. The other clue is nothing's happened on the surface of the cell because there's another part of the cell's life that starts to happen in late anaphase, right? So let's look at late anaphase then. Here's the cell. Whoops, here, let me uh, go back and do this. Here's the cell. In late anaphase, we start to see some dimpling in on the cell membrane. And that dimpling is called a cleavage furrow. So that's a big, big clue that we're now into late anaphase. The other thing that happens in late anaphase is that those um, chromosomes, those daughter chromosomes, are now pulled closer to the oops, closer to the um, centrioles. See that? They're further from the center. They're getting closer to those centrioles. Do you see that? So here, they were here, and then they just got pulled. So they got pulled, pulled to opposite ends, right? So that's the, some of the things that you're going to see in this late phase of anaphase. You see the cleavage furrow, and then you see that those, you know, those uh, daughter chromosomes are really moving closer to the centrioles. Then we get to the last phase of mitosis, and that is called telophase. And the one big thing that happens in telophase is that the nuclear membrane reforms. it reforms, right? So here we had our, there's our cell, there's our centrioles, there's our chromosomes, and the nuclear membrane reforms around those chromosomes and the centrioles are sitting right outside it, right? Yes? What happens to like the spindles? So the spindles, they're microtubules, they break up, and then they're gonna reform like they would in a normal cell, where they're just gonna radiate away from the centrioles like that, okay. just like they would normally. So they, they don't go away. The interesting thing is the cell membrane, re or the nuclear membrane reforming, that we don't know how that happens yet. We're trying to figure out how does the cell know to do that. But it just, it reforms um, and produces a new nucleus, right? So now we have, here's a nucleus, here's a nucleus, and it's, you know, surrounded by the nuclear membrane, and it's identical to the original one, right? So now in this first one, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. In the second one, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. In the original one, we had 23 pairs of chromosomes, and they're, they're, each of the nuclei are identical. They're identical. Okay. Now, the last thing that's going to happen then uh, is, so mitosis is over. 
But the cell, we, we don't have, we don't want to go around with this cell that has two nuclei when it's only supposed to have one nucleus, right? So the last thing that happens in the cell life is called cytokinesis. In this phase, the cytoplasm completely separates into two separate cells. So we have two separate cells, each with their own nucleus, each with their own pair of centrioles, and each with their 23 pairs of chromosomes. And while this is happening, all the organelles are dividing into... Yeah, the organelles. And so the organelles might not divide equally. Like maybe this one gets a few more than this one, you know. They might not divide equally. It doesn't matter because the organelles are made up of products that the nucleus can produce. Okay. So it'll make, it'll make new organelles as it needs it. Yep. Okay. Okay. So that's mitosis, right?